Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this picture. Adding a background glow to a macro subject can be tricky. With this technique the glow is not actually behind the subject at all, yet it appears in just the right place. Then adding a spot of colour makes for an interesting result. And in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so what I've got set up so far. On this table here I have this piece of black perspex. Now I'm using this because it will give a surface reflection and it also makes uh, quite a nice surface to take this type of uh, macro work on. It is actually surprisingly large considering that we're going to be using it for a macro shot but I'll come back to why that is so large a little later. So for the subject I have here um, some cherries and what I've done to one of them is just cut it in half so we can see on the inside uh, the stone. That's going to be our subject. Just place that there for a moment. Now obviously this won't stand up on its own so in order to make it stand up I'm going to use just a small amount of blue tack. So what I'm going to do is just place the blue tack on here, just making a bit of a stand like that. Now if I've got that the right sort of size it shouldn't be visible from the camera's point of view. There we are. OK, so from this direction you shouldn't be able to see the blue tack and yet it'll still support the cherry. Right, so for the camera then uh, I'm using this full frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now the camera is tethered into Capture One software so it's easy to follow along and see the results as we get them. OK, so I'm just going to place this on this tripod and we'll have a go at lining up the shot. So the first thing that I want to do is just zoom that in a little bit a bit bigger in the frame, something like that, and we'll have a go at focusing it. Ah, so that's reaching the limit of the focus on this lens. So if I want to uh, fill the frame and also have the subject in focus, I'm going to have to do something about that. And the easiest thing to do is to add an extension tube in between the lens and the camera body. And here I have an extension tube uh, and this one is a 125 millimeter one uh, and basically it's just a tube with some electrical connections so that the camera can communicate with the lens. Okay, so we just take that off add the extension tube and pop it back on. There we go. So with that in place it should allow me to focus a little closer. Let's give that another go. OK, so with the extension tube in place so the first thing I'll do is just zoom that in somewhere around there I think and then we'll have a go at focusing that up and now I can focus it to a sharp image there we go okay so with that done what I can do now is turn the camera on there we are and the software has recognized the camera and these are the settings that I have on the camera at the moment so it's in full manual mode, manual focus, everything. Uh, I have a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for that camera, ISO 100, 
and at the moment I've got an aperture of f8, which I think should suffice. We'll see how we go. Okay, so with no flash set, uh, what I'm going to do is grab an image and just make sure that we don't get any contamination from the house lights. There we are, so that just confirms that there is no image. So any light that I now add will be the only light which affects the subject. Okay, so I'm going to light this in a relatively simplistic manner. Uh, so basically I'm just going to put a uh, very small flash around here somewhere in front of the subject uh, and pointing straight down. And for that I'm going to use uh, this relatively small flash head. But even though it's uh, a small head, this is still around about 100 millimeters. So at this sort of distance, it's going to act like a soft light source. So if I want it a little crisper, I'm going to need to uh, move it further away, so somewhere up here. Okay, so with that set up, what I'll do now, turn the flash sync trigger on, and we'll grab an image and just see what we get, see if we can ascertain the correct exposure. Okay, what we can see in this image is that it's possibly a little overexposed. So what I'm going to do is just take some energy out of that light. So I'm going to start by taking off, um, what, two stops? There we go. And we'll grab that again. There we are. That's the sort of thing that I want. I'll just zoom in. We'll just check the focus. Yeah, that looks OK to me. Good. So I can see there's a small amount of flare in here, which is generally degrading the image a little. So what I might do is just use a small flag just to stop the uh, light from this flash head touching the surface of the lens there. Here we are, just a piece of card. Uh, again, just on a uh, lab stand clamp. And I'm just going to place this in here. I don't want to stop too much of the light, but I just want to make sure that it doesn't hit the surface of the lens. OK, so let's try that again. Yes, that's got rid of it. So this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. OK, so what about that background? In the original image, you could see that we had a glow behind the subject. So what you should be able to see from this setup so far, if I was going to try and do that, then that glow would have to be underneath this table. Uh, but that's clearly impossible. But I've used a large sheet like this so that I can use a reflection of a glow. So what I actually need to do is put my background at the back here so it reflects in the table behind the subject. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, we'll need a background. So for that, I'm just going to use this retort stand. Bring the arm up, like so, place that about there somewhere, and on that arm I'm going to place some 216 diffusion material. There we are. This is just very thin plastic really. air a bit like so and what I'm trying to do here is get this to reflect in the uh, the perspex. So if I have a look through the camera what I can see now with the house lights on is what looks like a, a white background but what that actually is is a reflection of this surface. So if I take a picture now for instance it won't appear white. Let me show you. There. It still appears dark. 
and that is because this isn't illuminated at all. So I need to add uh, a flash head behind this uh, to give me my graduation across it. So for that I'm going to use another small head. I'm just going to place it round the back here like so. There we go. So with that plugged into the pack, uh, what I need to do now is get it in the right position. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is turn the modelling light on, on that light. So we just do that like so. And now using live view, I'll just start that up. There we are. So now I should be able to move the light and get it in more or less the right position. So we can see it's a little low as it is at the moment. So if I just move this up and down, you can see it moving and from side to side. Move it around until it's in about the right place. There we are. That's the sort of place I want it, I think. OK. So now I can dispense with the uh, modelling light, come out of live view, and just at an arbitrary energy level, I'll grab an image. OK, so that's obviously far too bright, but you can see the sort of idea. So let's take um, quite a lot of energy off that. Uh, I'll take three stops off for now. There we go. And we'll just grab that again. There, that's coming along quite nicely. The graduation's a bit big uh, for what I want. So in order to uh, make it a little more concentrated, what I'm going to do is just add a snoot. So I just place this on the head, just like that. Yes, that's much more like the sort of thing I want. But now you can see it's actually slightly in the wrong place. So once again, I'll just go to Live View. And we'll turn the modelling light on. OK. So I'll just move that over ever so slightly. And just take it ever so slightly up. There. Now obviously you can do this without a modelling light if you're just using a flash gun, uh, strobe etc. You're just going to need uh, a few more iterations. But this way speeds it up a bit. So we'll just take that off, come out of live view, and we'll grab another image. There we are. That's just about perfect for position I think. Good. Right. So that's formed quite a uh, nice image, uh, just as it is. But I'd like to just um, add a bit of colour uh, to the background. So for that, I'm just going to use uh, a filter. So I'll just place this filter over the front of the flash at the back here. There we are. And just grab that again. There. Now I think that's made quite a nice little image. So, as far as capturing the image is concerned, that's it. So it's relatively simple and can all be done with uh, normal flash guns um, or strobes uh, if you don't have uh, a studio head. Uh, but you will need to iterate to get them in the right position. OK, so with all that done, next thing to do, go into Photoshop and just finish off the image. So here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up the file of the image that I captured earlier. So the first thing I want to do is just make a copy of this and the way that I prefer to do that is just to go onto the layer here, right click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer and we'll ask for a new document. We'll just call that Cherry. There we are. So now Photoshop has made me a new document called it Cherry so I can dispense with the camera original. I'm 
editing this file, not the camera original. That gives me some redundancy. OK. So, I mean, as far as the turns are concerned in this image, it's pretty good just as it is, I think. It might benefit from a very small adjustment. So I'll just add an adjustment layer, and I'm going to add um, a levels adjustment layer like this. So what I might do is just compress all the turns slightly, just to increase the contrast a little, somewhere around there. That's looking quite vibrant. Good. I think with that change done, that's probably it for the overall adjustment. So with that done, I'll move on and we'll just pick a crop. I'm using this for video, so I'm going to use a specific ratio of 16 by 9. I'm just going to make sure that the image is centered, which it is. I don't want to lose the top of this stalk on the bottom here, uh, so I might just move that ever so slightly up in the frame, something like that. There we are. I'll just click on OK. Now there are one or two dust spots that I've just seen here, um, so what I'm going to do is just go into the image and just clean those up with the spot removal tool. There we are. With that done, I can just zoom back out again. And there we have it. So that's how I've made this macro shot a little more interesting, by adding a graduated background. And together with careful lighting of the subject, and a choice of colour for the background, I've ended up with quite a nice little macro study. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.